Hey, welcome to Offshore Audio. I'm Andrew, a live sound engineer, and I'm here to help you mix better live events. Picture the scene. You've got someone fairly important on stage, whether that's a church service or a corporate event or an artist, and then you notice something weird about the sound and it catches your attention. So you pay a little more attention and yep, it's definitely dropping in and out every now and then. And it happens more and more. Your wireless microphone that you're using, it's not working compromised in some way, you have interference causing dropouts. It's every sound engineer's worst nightmare. So in this video, I'm going to take you through using Wireless Workbench by Shure to coordinate your wireless frequencies so that you can keep your mics up and free from interference and stop worrying about that kind of stuff. In this video, we're going to take a look at what Wireless Workbench is and why we're scanning for frequencies, that sort of thing. How to navigate Wireless Workbench and actually coordinate your frequencies and import devices into it. Finally, how to use groups and things to stay legal and make sure that you're in your designated areas. If you're just getting started mixing live events, then I have something for you. And that is my three-step guide to perfect EQ. This is just a PDF guide that you can download that gives you some clear, actionable steps to make better EQ decisions today. So you can get that by heading to offshoreaudio.no forward slash EQ, or you can click the link down below in the description. Without further ado, let's dive in. So what is Wireless Workbench? So Wireless Workbench is a wireless mic coordination tool made by Shure, sort of primarily for Shure wireless microphones, but it's actually really, really useful with other manufacturers such as Sennheiser, with some caveats, which we'll get into in a bit. And you should really be using it because wireless microphones are quite complicated actually in the way that they work with each other. And just because you're on a frequency which your transmitter says is available does not mean that that is an optimal frequency to be on. For example, your transmitter might tell you to pick a certain frequency, 500 megahertz, let's say, but it might not account for other transmitters in the area which are not occupying the space on 500 megahertz, but which are causing interference with your frequency there through a thing called intermodulation. Intermodulation or intermods is just a form of distortion that happens when you switch on multiple transmitters. There's a mathematical relationship. So if you have one at 500, one at 510, one at 520, they begin to interact with each other and distort. And these distortions are incredibly complex. And so the ultimate way to avoid them is to use a software to get the correct frequencies. This software also lets you set boundaries so that you can use legal frequencies because different countries and areas have different frequencies which they allot to wireless microphones and they use the rest for TV, phone signal, all these kinds of things. So we need to be in this legal range. So right before we dive in, the crux of wireless frequency coordination then is scanning the frequency spectrum to see what's out there and get an idea of what frequencies are available restricting our frequency spectrum so that we can only allocate frequencies within our legal bands that we are allowed to use and then calculating frequencies. Clicking a button and the software tells you a list of frequencies that you can use on your devices that are not going to interfere with each other, not going to interfere with other things like TV channels and are going to keep the feds happy. So let's talk about scanning really quickly. The scanning part of this is really important but it hinges on you having a scanner which you can connect to your laptop running wireless workbench. If you have a receiver which cannot connect to wireless workbench, you're gonna to have to do this the old fashioned way. Basically, turn off all the microphones that you're going to be using, use the controls in your receiver to scan for a new list or group of frequencies. And then you want to make sure that you pick frequencies only from that list. So if it's a Sennheiser and it gives you list nine and it says 10 available frequencies in list nine, you want to use list nine for all of your receiving units because otherwise you run into these problems with intermodulation again. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and open up Wireless Workbench. And what you're gonna see here is it's gonna ask you to connect an interface so that you can network, you can connect to the wireless devices that you're going to be connecting to. I advise you to use a ethernet cable. So for me, I just scroll down and I say Realtek PCIe GBE family controller. That is my ethernet controller. GBE stands for gigabit ethernet. By the way, you can just Google what is my ethernet controller and find out on your laptop and make sure that you select that. Obviously I'm not connected to anything right now. So it's saying network devices will not be discovered with current IP settings. That's fine for me. Unable to restart the network, of course. Now, when we open up, it opens up onto frequency coordination. So 
Oh, see, this is the page where you coordinate your frequencies. This page here shows your inventory. And this here allows you to monitor the wireless microphones that you have connected to the network if you have a laptop connected to them during the show. So first of all, we're going to look at inventory, right? When you connect to Sure devices out in the field, you'll see network on down here and it will be green. And then any devices that are connected to it will appear here with a sort of green light on this side here. The green light note shows you that you are connected to the devices and you can sync the frequencies directly or use that device to scan frequencies. But just now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to get devices in and coordinate frequencies without that. So I can click add new device. I'm just going to add an Accent Digital wireless rack, whatever, pick a band, G53. So if you're setting this up, you need to know which band your equipment is. And you can find that out by looking on the front panel of it or by reading the manual. And what these bands mean is it's just simply a group of frequencies. If you hover over it, it says here 470.125 to 509.875 megahertz. That is the range of frequencies that are in use on that particular receiver. So I'll pick G53. It's a four channel unit there. And I'll add that in. Now, for the sake of completeness, I'm going to show you a Sennheiser unit as well. On the left hand side here, you can see the different manufacturers that have supported profiles in this software. So we can click Sennheiser and a really common one is a EW300 series, generation three or generation four. And similarly, you need to pick the band for this. If you don't know whether it's A, B, C, D, E, G, check the unit, but also look at the frequency availability on the units you have and just hover over this and see what we've got. So I'll pick this one of 516 to 588 for this example. And we'll add four channels of this. As you can see here on the left, there's no icons next to the Sennheiser. And these icons next to the Sure one are grayed out, but these light up green when we are connected to them. So if you connected to a whole bunch of Sure equipment, it would populate this list automatically, but you can do it this way to work out your frequencies offline. So now we can go to frequency coordination, right? So the main thing that we want to do here is that we want to scan for new frequencies using our connected equipment. And to do that, we go over here and we, on recent scans, we can click this little cog icon, select devices to scan. And that opens up. And when these are green and live, you can select one of these, whatever one you want. I can't do that right now because it's not connected. But you select one of these and then you click start and you will see this area here populate with the data from that scan. And it's going to show you what the frequency spectrum looks like, the radio frequency spectrum. So I'm going to load in one from earlier so that you can see that. And we'll turn this off for the moment. So you can see there is a bunch of wireless activity happening across the spectrum here. And this is sort of what we need to avoid. The main ones, as you can see, are over here. These are TV channels. You can tell because they're six megahertz in width each. So that's two different television channels. And they might cause a problem for wireless equipment because they're so high. The rest of it's sort of below the threshold apart from one or two peaks. This red line here determines the level at which wireless work pension is going to say, no, I'm not, this is dangerous. So if I bring this down, you see all these peaks here above this red line. That means that now these will be treated as sort of signals that need to be avoided. But we can just bring that up because where was it? it was about here. The default is usually pretty good. So we have our inventory ready. We've scanned the frequency spectrum and we need to import our inventory into our coordination tab here. We just click select frequencies from inventory and I will just do all frequencies from inventory. And then you see it breaks it down by unit here. So that's my EW300s and that's my Accent Digital units there. And then it is as simple as just clicking calculate and it gives you frequencies that you can assign to all of your units. As I said, it's ignoring these little peaks down here because they are negligible. They're too low to really cause a problem once we turn our own transmitters on. And it has spaced them all, all eight of these, in a way that they will not cause intermodulation distortion with each other or interfere in any way. So that's great. And you can just click calculate again if you want to calculate different frequencies for whatever reason. And you can click analyze to double check if everything is compatible with each other and with the frequency spectrum that you have scanned. So let's talk a little bit about legality then, because in 
regions around the world, you're only allowed to use certain areas of this frequency spectrum, right? This, this whole thing here is not available for us to use. And we can use something called inclusion groups to make sure that our microphone frequencies land or are calculated only in the areas where it is legal to do so. So what we need to do first of all is we need to find out what is legal to use. It's as simple as just Googling that, right? We just whack open our browser, grab a new window and type, what frequencies can I use for wireless mics? And we'll pick a country, let's call it France. Open up your website, have a little look at it. And it tells you, if we can have a look, let's find France, France. And it's telling us our frequency ranges. So I can use up to 50 milliwatt transmitters in the band 470 to 694, which works just fine for those transmitters that I happen to pick. But let's make sure we don't want to allocating any frequencies that we don't like. We can open up Wireless Workbench again, and we go down over here where it previously said Add Frequencies, we can go to the next tab, which is Spectrum. Down on the bottom one, Inclusions, we can click this little cog here, and then you see User Groups and Inclusion List. Click Account for an Inclusion List when calculating frequencies. We are telling Workbench that this is important. Look at this list. I don't have any lists yet, so I need to click Manage to create one. I create one list. Inside that list, I create a group. Inside that group, I create one frequency range. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna enter the values that I found on that website. So I'll just start at 470 and we'll go to 694. So that's list one, group one. And we can double click on that list and we can rename it France. Then we click save. And you see inclusion list, France, great. So save that, and then I'll just select all of my frequencies here. I'll right click on them, and I'll move to inclusion group, group one. You can then click analyze again to see if everything is hunky-dory. And look at that. The frequencies that we had already calculated are acceptable and legal for use in France. Great, but let's, let's take an example where they might not be legal. Let's just artificially change that range. So if that range happened to start at 500, instead of 494, and I then click Analyze, you see that my Axiom digital frequencies are in the 400 megahertz band. They're no longer legal to use. So I could click Calculate to see if it calculates them again, and it's moved them all up into the low 500s. So now I click Analyze, everything's great. I lock all of my frequencies, and then these are the frequencies that I can use. If you're using Sure equipment that's connected to Wireless Workbench, you can click Assign and Deploy. And then down here, Deploy to Inventory. And it will tell you here how many frequencies go to the active channels. I'm not connected to any equipment, so I'm not deploying any of these to active channels. And that's pretty much it for coordinating wireless frequencies using Sure Wireless Workbench. In summary then, scan the frequency spectrum, input the equipment that you're using, and calculate a list of frequencies that are available for you to use. Use inclusion and exclusion groups to make sure that you're legal and you're within the frequency ranges that are allowed wherever you are in the world. If you can't use wireless workbench, then turn off your, all of your transmitters, your microphones, scan on your receivers and get a list and make sure you use the same list or group across all of the receivers. Again, I'll remind you that you can get my free three-step guide to perfect EQ by heading to offshoreaudio.no forward slash EQ or clicking the link in the description down below. If you want to get started making better EQ decisions right now, it's just a really simple three-step formula that I always use to make my EQ decisions and it served me well over the years, so go check that out. Leave me a comment. Let me know what wireless systems that you're using. Do you have any problems with coordination? Have you been using a tool like Wireless Workbench or have you just been hitting into the old receiver in the rack or wherever you've got it? There's loads more to talk about on wireless stuff, so if you're interested in other things like proper antenna placement or just best practices, let me know. But for now, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.